So Horror Hotel was supposed to be Evil Dead Rise. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, I have to say Evil Dead Rise was easily one of my favorite horror movies this year so far. I mean, I enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun. There was so much going on, and they really brought that scary horror aspect to Evil Dead once again. Uh, this is another uh, adaptation to the franchise, so there's lots to break down. We're going to talk first about the... Uh, the comparisons of Horror Hotel and, and Evil Dead Rise as to what what we were supposed to get and what we got. Uh, either way, I have to say Horror Hotel for me was one of my favorites. And if we would have gotten Evil Dead Rise, I guarantee you it would have been great too from what we saw in Horror Hotel and how detailed it was. I think Evil Dead Rise would have been great uh, as a maze. That being said, Horror Hotel was still a phenomenal maze and I love the originality behind it. So I was super stoked to go through that one and just analyze things I didn't see from the past. So thank you at Halloween Horror Nights for that. That was awesome. Um, and I'm looking forward to more originals from you guys in the future. That being said, let's get started with the very first scene we go through, which is uh, the entrance queue. Uh, when we're walking through the line at the very end where the uh, don't open dead inside door used to be, they actually replaced it with an elevator. And in the elevator showed a woman kind of, or a woman or a man, I don't remember, hanging from the elevator. Um, so the elevator is a huge part in Evil Dead Rise. That is how the uh, the mom character gets turned into uh, a deadite, essentially. So that would have been essentially the thing you would have seen um, in the beginning of the queue of the mom kind of turning into the demon. Uh, and that's what it would have kicked off your uh, story for um, Evil Dead Rise the Maze. Let's take a look at the overall apartment. The apartment is an apartment that was supposed to be in Los Angeles. This whole movie was supposed to set in Los Angeles. And Horror Hotel was a hotel in Hollywood, so therefore it worked out perfectly. Uh, the bedrooms look very similar in, in both the house and in person. No matter how busy you ever got, you always found time for me. It is um, a lot of comparisons when you look at this. Um, each room kind of had their own little scene and each room was actually represented in Horror Hotel. Let's look at the bathroom, for instance. The uh, One of the first scares that you see in Horror Hotel is the, I don't know, it was like the, the it was kind of like a person who was badly burned and peeks out of the, they, they peek out of the, um, the bathtub and all of a sudden you kind of get sprayed with water. This was, if you look at the trailer, if you watch the movie, Evil Dead Rise had a similar scene where the girl peeks out of the, of the bathroom and looks very scary. Easily, that's what that scene was supposed to be. We've even talked about this when the trailer came out, um, how that was supposed to be Evil Dead Rise. Just looking at the similar design of both bathtubs, uh, easily was supposed to be Evil Dead. The overall front room of the apartment is very similar to a big scene in in the in the um, the movie as well. There's actually one scene where they're all in the uh, the front room of the apartment, and a lot of people are like possessed, running towards them, charging towards them. And it's a very similar scene when you do the kind of turnaround in the maze uh, of going in from the kitchen, I believe, all the way into the turnaround to go out to the basement. Very similar scenes, very similar uh, setting, and I could see a lot of where that would have went and what scene would have been what. Especially the kitchen scene. If you look at a lot of the kitchen stuff in that uh, maze, in Horror Hotel, we see kind of like this woman, just it looks like she's been, she's like cooking something, but then she turns around, she looks all nasty, and then you kind of see the owner of the hotel pop out as well. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
it would probably have been the scene of the boy uh, that was uh, fighting his sister inside of the um, the uh, the kitchen. So that would have been uh, an interesting setting to see that because there's a lot of crazy shit that goes down in that kitchen. Uh, the hallways are also very similar to the film as well. If you look at the hallways in Horror Hotel, it's all the different apartment buildings and whatnot. And a piece of that movie actually takes place in the hallway. So we probably would have seen the mom pop out and whatnot. We probably would have seen a lot of the people who were involved in that hallway scene that ended up dying um, pop out and whatnot. So yeah, that would have been cool. Hug and kiss from you won't fix. Open up now. And you also got to take note, the entire movie takes place inside of a Los Angeles apartment complex outside of the opening scene. The opening scene actually takes place in the woods, which kind of tricks you thinking that it's going to be set in the woods again, but... All you can do is run. They kind of set that. That opening part is technically like the ending part. It, it's a lot to talk about, but if you see the movie, you'll understand that that ending actually ties in. The ending ties into the beginning and all that, so that was really cool. So, I mean, it was good to see Evil Dead kind of leave its comfort zone of the cabin and go into Los Angeles. Um, so that was really cool. I also believe the basement scenes of the hotel, of Horror Hotel, were actually supposed to be the parking lot scenes of the of the finale of the film. That's when we get our final battle with, you know, the, uh, the mom kind of merging all of the deadites together to kind of make this one big kind of Resident Evil looking monster. <laughs> which we get our final battle of inside of a parking garage. So I, I'm getting this out of here. I, I really do believe that, that that basement scene could have easily been turned to an apartment, or uh, I'm sorry, a, uh, a parking garage scene. There's a lot that they could have done with that and a lot that you could have seen and a lot that could have been there. Um, and seeing a lot of those aspects of the, the basement scene, you, could, you can easily kind of put other stuff in there and make it a parking garage scene. So that would have been really cool. It's really easy to see, once you watch Evil Dead Rise, it's really easy to see the, the comparisons between um, Horror Hotel and, and Evil Dead Rise. Now, the reason why it probably got scrapped from Halloween Horror Nights was probably because of the, the, the date. The, I don't think, I think for once that it, it has nothing to do with Warner Brothers. I really think that um, this had a lot to do with um, the release date of the film. Now. I, from what I've read, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, who are the executive producers of this film, really fought the studio to make this a theatrical release. Originally, this was going to be an HBO Max release, but they really fought the studio to make it a theatrical release. And ironically, it worked in their favor because this movie now is a box office success. Um, usually, I know when when something kind of gets leaked in the in the Horror Nights community, as far as a maze or a property goes, usually Warner Brothers scraps it. Um, if it, especially if it is a Warner Brothers property, uh, there's been a lot of, you know, we've had some mazes and properties show up at the event, but they're for the most part, when we're speculating one thing, it ends up getting, uh, removed from speculations. And then when you go through the maze, you can be like, yeah, this was supposed to be that we were supposed to have Beetlejuice in 2021. We were supposed to have the Conjuring in 2019, I believe. And we never got them. So no, I, I believe 2018 when they did the Titans of terror, maybe 2017, um, but you know, it, it, I think a lot of the, the reason why Evil Dead really didn't come to Halloween Horror Nights last year was essentially because 
of the release date that was promised and they had to eventually move it to which I believe was April. So um yeah, that's that's probably the reason why this this got scrapped. That's probably why we never I never saw the light of day. Um now let's get to what uh I really want to talk about and you know, we got through the horror hotel comparisons and and aspects of what it could have been. I want to talk about the future of Evil Dead. Now, this movie set up a lot of things for a potential future of Evil Dead without Ash. Um, everyone knows that Ash is an essential character to the Evil Dead franchise. You think of Evil Dead, the first person you think of is Ash. Chainsaw arm, boomstick in hand, Necronomicon. Like This guy has been through it all. We, we, we've seen three movies with him, an entire TV series of him, a video game with him. Um... And the list goes on and on. Comic books, books, all that stuff. Well, what I found interesting about this to, for them to kind of tie everything in with the lore, but also um, keep going in the sequels and the direction that they're going, they finally confirmed, which originally was a gag in Army of Darkness, that there are three Necronomicons out there that were written and, and published and, and, and put out into the world. Now... We've technically kind of seen all three already. I don't know exactly where they'll go in the next round, but we've seen all three books. Now, the the, the fan theory and, and the theory that I've been reading, the theory that kind of makes the most sense, is that essentially the you know the, when they hear the tapes of, of the Necronomicon playing, you hear about the three books. Now, we've seen all three books. Now, the first book that we saw, obviously, was from the original Evil Dead, and that went on with us for Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness, following, of course, uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. We've seen the Necronomicon travel with that. So, we know Ash has a copy of the Necronomicon. And Evil Dead 2013, which was the essential uh, remake of Evil Dead, uh, the original, which was a more horror vibe, which kind of kicked off this universe in a way. It was, they all tie into one universe, it's looking like. We saw another adaptation of the of the Necronomicon. Uh, so now we, we, we go to Evil Dead Rise and we see our third adaptation of the Necronomicon. That's three books right there. So the fan theory goes that eventually what's going to happen is they're going to build this kind of universe because every hero that has come out of these movies has lived. Ash is still alive, the girl from 2013 was alive, and the final girl with the little girl at the end of Evil Dead Rise, still alive. Um, the cool thing about this, which Bruce Campbell did say in an interview recently, is that Evil Dead offers something where an audience can relate to. None of these characters have any special abilities, none of these characters are like, they're just regular people. And... They happen to they find something and they happen to mess with it and all this stuff happens. So this literally can happen to anyone, is what Bruce Campbell said. And I and I 100% agree because you put yourself into this situation. You're like, am I getting out alive? Am I not? This is a very realistic situation for them. Uh, so essentially, what I would love to see is all three of our heroes, four technically, uh, all get together and kind of do like a little team up to finish off Deadites and whatnot. That would be cool. I mean, you know, you have. Mia, you have Ash, you have Beth Barker. All three of them, two of them lost a hand. All three of them used a chainsaw. All three of them used a boomstick. It's it's there. The fucking, it's there. The formula is there. I'm excited to see what is next in the franchise. I know uh, Sam Raimi and, and Bruce Campbell have kind of essentially written what they call a Bible of the, the future of the Evil Dead franchise of where they would love to see the story go. However, they did say that as long as the aspects of where they want the story to go are there, they are awesome and, and they are cool of letting the directors and the writers have the freedom to create an Evil Dead movie that they want to see and that they want to uh, make. So I'm excited to see where the future goes. I'm excited to see uh, more Evil Dead in the future. But what do you guys think? Was there a lot of comparisons to Horror Hotel and Evil Dead? Was there a, What do you guys think of Evil Dead Rise as a film? Are you guys excited for the future of Evil Dead? What do you guys think about the three Necronomicons that are now established and that are now canon in this universe? And what do you think of the fan theory of maybe all three of these survivors coming together, forming this kind of team to face off all the Deadites and maybe destroy all the Necronomicons? Leave your thoughts and comments right down below. I'm your host, Anthony, and I will see you guys next week for another video.